skills. They become a drug to society, drunk, drunkards, drug addicts, and criminals. But empowered, they become a real source for uh, uh, wealth creation. It is a pity today that many African youths... Drug that, that is possible. Daughter Excellency Randy Mandato, it's your turn, sir. Four minutes. Je ne pense pas. Well, I do not think that Pan-Africanism is actually dying out. No, because Pan-Africanism is in us. We are Pan-Africanists. You cannot erase the history of uh, this continent, the history which also includes the efforts of our diaspora. So, Pan-Africanism Pan Africanism is really not dying in Africa. It is true that we all have a huge responsibility. The current generation that we are, we have to work to make sure that the future, genera the future generation should not forget what our founding fathers actually had in mind when uh, they were establishing the OAU so that those, all those who are in Africa should continue to, to live the same dream, dream the same dream. We inherited this continent from our founding fa fathers, and we have the Africa that we want. The, the, the Africa that we see is the Africa where we live in, and the Africa that we want is the Africa that we want to prepare, and which we must prepare. And so, there is a clear difference between the Africa in which we are and the African Union, which is our own home, the common house. And if the African Union Commission does not um, put in the right resources, the human resources and the financial resources, even the diplomats and the military, we will not get to where we want to be. And so I am of the opinion that it all depends on the will of the people to go beyond the challenges that we that we face today. We all know the problems of our African Union today. There are certain aspects that do not meet the expectations of the people. For example, the SACA audit that was prepared by experts proposing reforms that have to be undertaken. We also have reforms that were undertaken in 20, 2016. So we need to undertake those reforms to ensure that the African Union can actually rise to the challenges. The regional economic communities also have a role to play. I went to the Commissar for several years and actually saw the efforts undertaken by um, countries of Comesa and East Africa. And we, 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 want, we, we see Tunisia, Egypt in Comesa as well. And the, this will continue. We have the, the Abuja Treaty actually defined gradual um, integration at the regional level and then the continental level. And I know we will get there. And I am going to work with the members of um, the next commission so that together we can actually make all of this easy. And lastly, I think we should also bear in mind, we should also think about the military bases, the foreign military bases in Africa, in African countries. Some countries have already started to take their own destiny in their hands in terms of their security. We should be brave enough. We should actually have that courage to make sure that we can actually stand out there as adults, adults that can actually take their destiny in their own hands. Foreign military bases in Africa, we do hope that in a few years' time, those military bases will be a thing of the past because this military base is actually a source of conflict. Thank you. Thank you very much, Excellency Randra Mandriato, candidate of uh, Madagascar. Now we listen to um, Raila Amolo Adinga, candidate of Kenya. Thank you. Well, uh, <clears throat> I mentioned earlier on about the inter-African trade, which today stands just at 15%. Inter-European trade, on the other hand, stands at 70%. Inter-Asian trade stands at 60%. Africa trades more with the external world than with itself. 
wasting a lot of resources. Now, how did the Europeans come from behind and leapfrog and overtake Africa? That is something that we need to ask ourselves. But here we need to now look forward to how, see how we can be able to make use of this huge domestic market that we have. We have a population of 1.4 billion people. And that is what has helped China. China to do two things. One was to train the, the, the younger generation, the youth, so that they had a very highly skilled manpower. And when they liberalized their economy, the manufacturing unit in the West rushed to China. If you go to China, for example, take the automobile, the Ford, the Jeep, the BMW, the Mercedes, the Toyota, the Nissan, they, they all they are in China. And because they was cheap, highly skilled, cheap labor, secondly, cheap raw material. The raw materials which they were actually getting originally from Africa. And that is how China has managed to develop a 600 million uh, people middle class. Africa can be able to fill the gap which is being left down there by China by actually coming together and op opening up. So we need to come together as Africa and create an African market which will be able to attract investors to come to our continent. Africa is the youngest continent in terms of population. 70% of our population is below the age of uh, 35. That is a big uh, uh, bonus. It can be a bonus or it can be a, uh, a curse. If the youth are not empowered, give a requisite knowledge uh, and skills, they become a drug to society, drunk, drunkards, drug addicts, and criminals. But empowered, they become a real source for uh, uh, wealth creation. It is a pity today that many African youth drown in the Mediterranean trying to seek greener pastures in Europe because we have not created conditions that can retain them here. Now we are saying that we want to create a situation where every African youth must be connected to the internet and using the artificial intelligence and, 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 and uh, uh, information technology we can be able to give this youth opportunity to work anywhere in the world when they are staying here on the continent. This is something that we are going to address, empowerment of the African youth and together with the African woman so that we, we create uh, a workforce that will be helped in terms of wealth creation on the continent. This will enable Africa to leapfrog and to catch up with the rest of the world. I'm saying that I want to be a vehicle to be used to, to help Africa to get there. We will work together with all the leadership in the continent so that Africa moves. Thank you, Your Excellency. Thank, Thank you very much, Your Excellency Raila Odinga, finishing us on the third round. And now we move into the fourth and final round, and I give my sister the opportunity to open the envelope and tell us what the first or the last question rather is. And ladies and gentlemen, as a form of a reminder, after this we have a quick break, and after the break each of our esteemed candidates will have two minutes to share their closing remarks. Fatima? Chair, uh, uh, dear candidates, uh, your question uh, is uh, this uh, one. Uh, the implementation uh, of uh, the key reforms of the African Union that were uh, decided by the Assembly of Heads of State and Government uh, it has uh, come to a standstill. It, um, it has a, a negative uh, impact uh, on the structural uh, stability and uh, the financial viability of the Union and also on, uh, the, uh, on, the, on the, 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 the lack of the African Union uh, to have an impact. Were you to become the chairperson what new approaches would you um, adopt uh, to, uh, to reinvigorate uh, the uh, implementation of these uh, reforms and rationalize uh, the uh, programs of the African Union and uh, strengthen its effective effectiveness in the long term? 
under the topic of implementing of reforms agreed under the assembly decision 635 the implementation of key african union reforms decided by the assembly of heads of states and governments has stalled with an adverse impact on its structural viability and financial sustainability and the au's focus on a high or a few high impact public goods if you become chairperson what new approaches will you introduce to reinvigorate the implementation of these reforms, streamline the AU's agenda, and strengthen its long-term effectiveness? Et uh, j'invite à présent le candidat to invite the candidate from uh, Madagascar uh, to uh, respond uh, first. Uh, first of all, we have to begin uh, by by, by, uh, by, by uh, 